uh, we just heard the last talk, it was, it was great. And we know that IoT now have a very big market. Okay. Yes, it is. IoT is growing very rapidly. And we are keep, keep seeing these headlines, right? And we will keep seeing this in the next a couple of years. Uh, and the interesting thing is just around us. Uh, smart home has the largest market share in the consumer IoT products. Uh, and there are a lot of uh, IoT platforms, for example, some, uh, Samsung SmartThings, Google uh, uh, Apple HomeKit, and Amazon Alexa. And there are a great many of smart devices in the market, for example, smart locks, smart lights, uh, uh, and some of that. And different from the uh, from pre previous years, now the smart devices, they are no longer performing, performing a single function. Now they are connected, sorry. Now they become connect, interconnected to perform a diverse activities. For example, when we come home, uh, the motion sensor detect our motion, then the camera at the door identify our faces and open the door for, for us. When the door is opened, then the lights is turned turn on for you. Uh, the thermal state is turning to a, a good temperature for you, and maybe the TV is also turned on for you. It sounds amazing, right? And with the program provided by the IoT platforms, you could program any automation you want. But the problem is uh, how to identify where diagonals are incorrect in behavior if something goes, uh, goes wrong or is it's not as expected as, as, you were, uh, as you would expect it. So uh, another fundamental uh, question is how to explain the system behaviors. A single approach is to look into the IoT logs. But IoT logs, uh, the current IoT logging system, they are device-centric. That means the logs are in the devices itself, where they only log what the devices do. But, but this log doesn't keep the causal dependence between these events or data. For example, uh, the light was turned on at 11, 14 a.m. Uh, so you may wonder why the light was turned on in the daytime. Uh, to figure out this, you, you need to collect the logs from different devices in the home, uh, which is previous than this time, and try to figure out the reason. Uh, from these logs, uh, can, we, can we know why the light will turn on? Maybe because of the front door, or maybe because of a motion sensor, or maybe because of something else. So just from the logs, we're not able to figure out why the light will turn on. Uh, well, on the other hand, data provenance is a very powerful technique to check the relationship between, acti uh, between activities in a computer computing system. Data provenance checks the history of actions have been taken on a data object from its creation uh, to the current uh, state. So we have these logs. If we have an approach to build the causal dependency among these logs, then it will become very easy to understand what happens in your home. Uh, for example, if we could build such a provenance graph, then if we want to answer the question, why the light will turn on? We could start with this on function of the light and traverse back in time in the graph and find, finally found that this on function was being invoked by uh, a motion detected event from the motion sensor. So now we can answer the question, the light was turned on because motion was detected. From this small example, we can see that data provenance is a very helpful techniques also in Internet of Things. So in this paper, we propose our framework, Probe Things, which is a general framework for the capture, management, and analysis of data provenance in IoT platforms. So this is a high-level architecture of our framework. We modular, modularize the design of it into a collection module, a management module, and an analysis module. Then I will go to into the detail of each module. So for the provenance collection, since in our things 
now become interconnected, we should collect data provenance not on a single devices. We need to collect data provenance from different components in the system. Uh, for example, the devices and the apps. Then we use, uh, the, uh, when we have this data provenance from different components, we can build a whole provenance graph of the system. And also, we perform automatic program instrumentation to collect data, data provenance from a program. And using this way, we could uh, have minimally invasive to the ex existing platform so that the current IoT platform can adapt our approach with a modified uh, their, uh, infrastructure. For this instrumentation based collection, what we do is we instrument some code to the program before the program was submitted for execution. Uh, for example, given the IoT app, we first pass it to a abstract syntax, syntax tree form. Then on this uh, abstract syntax tree, we could do some static analysis, for, for example, data flow analysis and control flow analysis. Then we generated some code into this program, which become an instrumented app. And the instrument code is responsible for collecting data, uh, data provenance about the data objects, uh, like how the data was being created, uh, created and how the data derived to another ob data object and the activities in these programs. So here is a very small and a simple example. In this, in this code, uh, the, the, the inventor of the log is being handled by this event handler. First, this code gets the name of the event. Then it gets the value of the event. And here is a logging function which logs the name and the value of the event. Uh, and then a message was contra uh, constructed using the value and sent it, using, sent it to somewhere using the IGTP uh, function. After instru instrumentation, uh, this code, the instrument version, code, uh, version of the code becomes like this. We instrument some code to check the data uh, uh, causal relationship in this code. Uh, for example, this piece of code is to identify that this is an entry point to the program. Then we check that uh, the name data object and value object is, are come from this event object. And here we check the login, the function call of the login function. And finally, we check another data de derivation and check this HTTP post function. So uh, this instrument code will capture the data provenance in this program. But from this example, you'll see that to capture the, uh, to capture the complete data provenance, we need to instrument every interaction in the program. But there are some interactions that are unnecessary to rebuild the uh, system behavior. So here we propose the uh, selective code instrumentation. That is, we only instrument the code that is related to a source, a source or a sync. Here we define a source as uh, a security sensitive data object, uh, for example, the state of, a lo of your log. And we de define a sync as a security sensitive method, for example, the unlock command. Then we could do a pro program slicing of this program and only instrument the code that is related to the, this source or sync. Uh, for the previous example, since this login function, which logs the name and value of the event, this is unnecessary in rebuilding the system behavior. So we, we could ignore this, uh, this interaction and also another interaction which was used by this, uh, this interaction. So this is the final program where we'll do instrumentation. Right? This is for collection. So for the management module, uh, as, we, as we just described, the data provenance are collected from different components in the IoT system. So this component will do aggregation, merging, and filtering of the uh, data records. Uh, and then we convert this data, uh, data provenance record into a unified IoT uh, provenance model and, uh, and build provenance graphs. Then with then we store two different uh, 
storage backends. For the analysis module, we provide a query API, which you, you can do to do a forward and backward analysis. And we have a policy engine, which you can specify the policies in the, form, in the format of graph patterns, because as you see, the, graph, uh, the problem graph is a graph. And also, our policy monitor will keep watching this uh, problem graph and enforce, enforce the policies. We implant our system on Samsung Smart Sync platform. Uh, before the smart apps and device handlers are submitted to the smart things uh, cloud backend, we do the instrumentation. And during the execution, the instrument will uh, send the provenance metadata to our provenance uh, server, which to build the provenance graph. For our evaluation, we do two kinds of evaluation. One is we do evaluation on 26 possible IoT attacks to evaluate the effectiveness, effectiveness of our approach. And we do another evaluation on uh, 236 commodity uh, smart apps for performance evaluation. So here is the results. Uh, ProofSense was able to rebuild all the tested attacks. And uh, the instrument, uh, instru uh, instrumentation overhead was small, uh, only 24 milliseconds for smart app and 27 milliseconds for device handler. And this is only one time, time effort. And the storage overhead is also small. Uh, it only requires uh, 260 kilobytes for, uh, for, per, uh, for daily use. For the end-to-end -end latency, we tested both on virtual and physical devices. It only occurs uh, 4 percentage to 5 percentage latency with physical devices. So this is, so this is profit, uh, profit, uh, efficient enough for the real work workloads. Uh, our framework have uh, a lot of use cases. So here I will use a small example to show one use cases of our framework, uh, which is we can use it to investigate uh, information leakage in your home. In this setting, there are two apps and uh, two devices. The local, local manager app is an app which you can up upgrade or set your pin codes of the lock. And the face door app uh, is, a, is an app that can unlock the door uh, using face recognition using the front door camera. But here, this face door app is a malicious app which can spy uh, on the data of other devices and send out to uh, an, an attacker. So the pin code is going from this lock manager app to your, to your lock, then to the face door app, and finally go to the attacker. Using our framework, by in instrumenting, uh, instrumenting this app and device's handlers, we could build a proven graph like this and use this to understand how this, uh, how this information leak happened and why it happened. So we can start with this user input, which is a pin code, and do a forward analysis on this proven graph. F follow the arrow, uh, uh, along these arrows, we could see that this pin code is being used finally into this uh, HTTP, HTTP post function. And this is being sent out to an attacker side. Then we want to uh, ask why this function was being invoked. Then we could start from this function and do a backward analysis back into the history uh, of its execution. And we can follow this arrow. And finally, we, we could understand that this function was being invoked because when we install this malicious app, it has set a, a scheduler which will keep sending out this, uh, this, this spider data to the attacker. So we can, we can see from the example that this problem graph is very helpful in understanding what happened in your, in your system. As a summary, ProofSense is a general framework for the capture, management, and analyze of data provenance in IoT platforms. And, and we believe this is the first step into providing solutions for different IoT stakeholders in the IoT system. Uh, for example, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not only used, can be used only for, uh, for attack investigation, it can be also used for like system diagnosis, debugging, monitoring, uh, and access control. Thank you.
Yes, yeah. So in, some, in this work, we, we uh, consider the pump form setting. So like what you described, like there are heterogeneous devices with different apps to control them. Uh, currently, uh, this approach doesn't work works for that. Because uh, from our study and our observation, now the IoT platforms are more popular because they can inc incorporate different devices. So this approach uh, is designed for the IoT platform. Okay, I have a question about this, and it's nice. And uh, so why this is unique uh, to IoT? I see it's a very general framework, right? And why this is unique to IoT? Yeah, uh, this is not general to IoT. This is a, a Actually, it's a general data problem collection framework. Uh, what is general for IoT, uh, what, what is uh, different for IoT is that uh, in this, uh, in this form, uh, framework, we, for first we consider that we need to collect data problems from apps and devices, and also we convert them into a IoT, unified IoT prov provenance model, because in IoT, uh, a system, even they have different IoT platforms, but they, uh, even though they have different uh, terms for the co and concepts, but it, they actually they are similar in several ontologies. So we define that, so we can define like some general policies or analysis tools for uh, this IoT pro data provenance. Yeah. Okay. So I I have a, qu a question. Uh, this is Berkey from Penn State. Um, so what I see is. One of the uh, unique thing here, basically you model the life cycle of an IO2 program. And then you said you are working on abstract syntax trees, right? Mm -hmm. So um, why you are working on the abstract syntax tree? And if you are working on it, so I'm interested more in uh, your programming analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, you never mentioned that like, is it pet sensitive or context sensitive? Because I feel like um, the IOT apps can have a lot of branches and also infeasible conditional branches too. Yeah. So do you have a solution for that? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Let me see. Yeah, so for your first question, uh, so for your first question, we, uh, why we use, uh, we convert to this upper stretch syntax tree? Uh, that is, uh, when we are working with this uh, Samsung smarting platform, uh, what we can do is that we can submit our customer code to their platform. And also this is true for some other platforms. So we think uh, it's, a good, it's a good approach to directly working on the source code. So to do that, we need to, uh, to use the abstract syntax tree form to do the uh, instrumentation. Uh, for your, another question, uh, uh, sorry, what, what's your next question? Um, the other question, like, even though the, um, the IoT apps are simple, so in mm -hmm. terms of programming analysis, you need to yeah, address. Yeah, I, I, I recall that, uh, remember that. Uh, so yeah, uh, for the program, they, they did have some like data code or branches, right? Yeah. Uh, we take that in, into consideration. What we do is, uh, like when we do the slicing, we will only identify the code that will be used or will or could, or could be used in some uh, execution. So the data code will be sliced uh, out. We will not in instrument that part. Okay, thank you. Okay, a quick one. So uh, you mentioned that the platform is so important. So why not do this logging at the platform level instead of app level? Yeah, yeah, good question. So yeah, definitely the uh, platform uh, vendors, they could adopt this approach and, uh, and do logging in their platforms. Uh, but, uh, but we provide a pr approach which they don't need to modify their infrastructure to do that. Thank you.